45. Isaiah 45. I want quick leaders of the Bible. Quickly turn to Isaiah 45. Amen. I have a powerful message for you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Can we stand up on our feet? Can we stand up on our feet? Amen. One, two, three. What we declare? What we declare? One, two, three. This is my Bible. I believe what it says about me. I'm about to receive the word of God. My life shall never be the same again. I shall be empowered. I shall be impacted. I shall be polished. Holy Spirit, help me now to receive the word of God. Give him praise in the house of God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Take up your seats with joy. Isaiah 45 and I read. Are uh, you there? Yes. Isaiah, the book of Isaiah, for the fifth chapter, we're reading from verse 1 all the way to verse 3. Hallelujah. And I begin to read. Let's stand up and read the word. Let us stand up and read the word. Thus says the Lord to his anointed, to Silas, whom right end I have held, to subdue nations before him, and to lose the armor of kings, to open before him the double doors, so that the gates will not be shut. I will go before you, and make the crooked places straight. Amen. I will break in pieces the gates of bronze and cut the bars of iron. Amen. I will give you treasures of darkness and hidden riches of secret places that you may know that I, the Lord, who called you by your name, I am the Lord, God of Israel. Father, thank you for the ministry of your word. Those few scriptures, lines, God, help me as an interpreter and as an ex expound of God. May you release your revelation and anointing and your understanding that your people will fathom and their lives will never be the same again this morning. We are breaking every yoke tonight, every gate, every hindrance. Anything that I held your people captive is broken by the mighty power in the name of Jesus. People of God say amen. 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 Sit down. Look at your seats. I don't know what kind of a title I can give this message. The gates are open. Tell your neighbor the gates. You don't have confidence? The gates are open. The gates are open. The entrance is removed. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. And I want us to change the name of the Lord says to my anointed Cyrus and put your personal name. To my anointed, you put your name. To my anointed Martin, hallelujah, praise the Lord. To my anointed, don't, want, don't let me speak your name, you know your name. To my anointed, to my anointed, you put your name there. Now the Lord is saying to his anointed church, oh, praise the Lord. I've got good news. After we broke curses for the last two Sundays, we broke first the curse of lineage and generation, then last Sunday we broke the curse of financial. And let me tell you, God is doing great things. Amen. Indeed, doors have started to open. I don't know some of you if you have testimony. Me, I have testimonies and I can't even come to them. Amen. Amen. I've started to see the overflow. Amen. Oh my God, just follow me. I have overflow, overflow. You know what is overflow? Something that is gushing without control. Oh my God. Amen. The pipe is already burst. Amen. God's blessing has started to flow. Amen. Why? Because when the curse is broken, what proceeds here after is a blessing. Tell your neighbor a blessing. I am blessed. And the word blessed, let me explain what the word blessed means. The ability 
to make wealth, the ability to prosper. That's the definition of the word bless. So when you tell somebody, God bless you, you are not just speaking something lightly. You are telling the person, go and make it in life. Go and prosper. Go and flourish. Go and become great. Go and succeed. Go and possess. You are possessed. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise be to God. Amen. Now, God precisely knows our present and the current conditions and what kind of need we require. God is speaking to Cyrus and Cyrus was an even king. Let me tell you, you can find favor in God even when you are misplaced. Yes. Sometimes you may be misplaced, but God can relocate you and bring you back and position you. Yes. The Lord knows us precisely. The Lord knows our needs from the bottom of our heart. Amen. God does not need to be reminded who you are. The Bible says our names are written in his palm. So God has a poor dear. This is a God's computer. When he turns it like this, he sees Pastor Bishop Martin Catherine, a mighty anointed man of God. You have to know who you are. Yes. Don't let people tell you who you are. Yes. I am an anointed man man of God. Amen. Tell the devil you are anointed. Amen. Now, God spoke to Cyrus telling him, Cyrus, I hold your right hand that I know where you are. You are fighting with the even with the enemies, but I'm going to hold your right hand. When God declares the right hand, you know that is the right hand of strength. Amen. Praise be to God. Amen. Right arm of strength. The Lord is good. Right hand of strength. Yes. So he says to Cyrus, to my anointed Cyrus, to my anointed Pastor Martin, to my anointed daughter, to my anointed church, I hold your right hand. And when you hold your child the right hand, can any enemy ever try to touch? Can any ever try to touch that child? Because you are covered, you are protected. Amen. Now, God is holding our right hand. Right hand represents strength, so we are going to be strengthened by his power and might. The place where you have been weak, God is coming to strengthen you. Where the church has been weak and been pushed to the wall until we can't even have a word because of intimidation, God says to my anointed church, I'm coming to hold your right hand and push you to your destiny, push you to the right place where you're supposed to be, where you're being misplaced. I am returning you back there and I will plant you there and I will make you great and I will bless you and I will protect the blessings that I impart in your life and I will guard you 24-7. I will throw a seed of angels. I will put a wall. I will put barriers. No demon, no spirit, no power, no attack that is function against you. Whoever prosper because I call myself. I will lead you. I will protect you. I will uphold you with my hand. My right hand will never be far from you. My protection will never cease. Exodus 15 and verse 6, we can read. Book of Exodus, 15th chapter and verse 6. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I got it and I'll read it. In Jesus' name. It says this. You are right hand, O Lord, has become glorious in power. Your right hand, O oh Lord, has dashed the enemy in pieces. When the Lord holds your right hand, he diminishes and destroys completely all the enemies, those who Ghana have against the Exodus 15, 6. The Lord is by saying the hand of God is a mighty hand of power that destroys your enemy into pieces. You are enemies. Enemies of your success, yes. enemies of your destiny, yes. enemies of your good health, yes. enemies of your finances, enemies of your ministry, enemies of your calling, enemies. 
enemies of your career, enemies of your job, God is going to break them into pieces. And when they are, you know, when they become pieces, when God breaks them into pieces, they are fragments. They cannot be joined back. Amen. The enemy cannot can, can come back again. Yeah. God is going to destroy the enemies of the church. Yeah. The devil has been trying to destroy the church for too long. It is time for us to find favor even with our enemies. Praise yeah. to God. We are entering a dispensation when God will completely and and destroy all our enemies. And now our enemies will not fight us anymore. Because we'll be so mighty for them. Hallelujah. Yeah. The Bible says now, I will subdue nations. What is to subdue? To take captive. I will subdue. I will arrest. I will capture them. I will bind them. I will subdue nations. Now, you will know your enemy is not one nation. Israel and so many nations that were fighting against it. But it does not matter the magnitude of your enemies. What matters is who is on your side. Uh, yes. What matters is who is on your side. Yes. Your enemies might be many and mightier. Yes. But let me tell you, God's power is not limited. Yes. I don't underestimate the devil. The devil is powerful. I don't underestimate the devil. But we have the supreme power. Yes. The power of God. Yes. Oh my God, when the chariots of heaven and there is no demon spirit can stand. Yes. The devil can release all his weapons, but he gets exhausted. Yes. His power is limited. I want you to know the devil was in heaven. Mm. And the power that the devil has is what we call angelic power. Mm. The angel's power, because he was in the presence of God. He was the chief entertainer. Mm. He was the music director. And he could go in the presence of God, and he can go even now and come back. But the purpose now going is only to accuse you. Now he cannot dwell in heaven anymore. So the power that he fell with is still there, angelic. That's the demonic power where he gets people's minds and he binds people and he heals people's minds captive. But now when we have the supreme power, when we have the anointing of God, no devil. Let me tell you, don't, be, don't fear the devil. Don't fear the devil. What you need to know is know his schemes and his strategies and use God's word. Amen. When he came to Jesus, he was powerful. Can you imagine he came to test Jesus, coming to test God in the book of Matthew 4, chapter 4. If you are son of God, can you imagine he challenging, and how, how can you doubt that if you are? Now, if it is us, he could do to Jesus like that. What about us right now? If you think you are a child of God, but Jesus didn't waste time to tell him anything. He told him, it is written. He reminded him with the scripture. It is written, men shall not live on bread alone, but from every word of God. What is the word of God? The word that is written in the Bible. Jesus didn't even quote the scripture. He didn't quote even the, 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 the chapter or the verse. You need to know to recite the word. Because the Bible says they overcame him by the word of the testimony and by the blood of the Lamb. There is no other weapon you can defeat Satan with other than the word of God, the infallible word of God and the word of your testimony. Learn to speak positively, testify all the time, quit talking negative. The church is spreading so much of talking things will not happen. This does not happen. What you need to cause is it shall happen, it shall come to pass, it shall happen, it shall come to pass. That's why I keep on talking about this ministry. It's a mega ministry going to touch all nations of the world. Soon and very soon, we will be preaching to the whole world. World. So let me tell you, brethren, God wants us to be the top. God wants us to be the end. God wants us to have the power. But this power, you have to discover your identity. You have to know who you are. You have to know your position in God. Because God has entrusted and given the church the anointing. And the work of the anointing is not to put it in the pockets. Amen. The work of the anointing is to release to people who are needed. Now, nations and their kings, that are our enemies, and have been assistants before us, so that we will easily overthrow them. God will subdue them on our behalf. Guess what? God will weaken their powers so that we can defeat them. Because that power ourselves, we don't have it. 
but God goes ahead of you. Why? When he gets hold of your hand, he goes and he subdues, he arrests. Can you imagine if the person who was fighting you is arrested now, you are told, come on, come and beat this person. Now, if somebody beat my son Mika, I will go and get hold of that person and say, Mika, get a whip. Beat it. Come on, wait this person. That's what God will do. He will arrest the enemy, will subdue him, and weaken his power that we will come and we will treat the devil, we will fix him where he belongs. We will cast him and tell him everything that you have taken captive, every blessing that you have stolen from me, every healing, every success. Return it back. Because already he has got, when you catch a thief, you, you go in the pockets and check what he stole from you, man, you retreat back. Your, hey, you retreat back. That's the, the, the splendor, the, 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 the blunder. Mm -hmm. Now, after the nations are overthrown, because who will overthrow them? And these are not physical mm -hmm. nations now. Spiritual demonic powers mm -hmm. in the hair. Do you know when you pray, demons are in the hair, in the spiritual weakness, they broke your prayers. In the book of Daniel, when uh, this uh, man of God, Daniel, was praying and fasting, yeah. the principalities of Persia, when the angel was sent to bring the revelation, the Bible declares that uh, the principalities of Persia, prince of Persia, will be held Archangel, Archangel Gabriel for 21 days. Can you imagine you are fasting and 21 days your blessing is with the herald? It matters how powerful and how prayerful you continue to be. Some of us, we pray and we stop. We fast and we stop. You don't need to stop. Persistence wears out the resistance. You gotta be persistent. Persistence. You pray and they pray until you pray through. You pray, you wake up in the morning, you don't see anything, you go back again, you say, I am not relenting. You get up next week, nothing happens. You say, still devil, I am not quitting. That's what will determine that God will send another power. That God send an angel, Michael, now who is the prince of all angels, who is the commander in chief of the army of the Lord. And he came out of a power that the principalities of Persia and the angel Gabriel was able to release to be released to bring the, the revelation to Daniel who was fasting. Therefore, we should not quit when you start to pray, when you start to believe God for something. Continue to be persistent. Continue to fall the fire for quitters never win, winners never quit. Have a spirit of militancy, never quit the battle. Fight until the battle is won. Fight even if you see military men, even their woods, their brothers, guys, now still they don't release their gun, they don't release their weapons. They continue to fight, and when the victory comes, they forget about the bruises. There is no battle that has no hoods, there is no battle that has no afflictions. For many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord God delivers them from them all. So the enemy shall come in one direction, but he shall flee in seven ways. Resist the devil, not submit yourself unto God, and resist the devil, and he shall flee from you. We need to be in the systems. We resist the devil. When you enter into the ring, you don't run away. No matter how many punches. Let me tell you, I have learned something from the wrestling. How many of you I used to watch wrestling? I don't watch now. Because it's demonic. But I learned something. We can learn things from something. The less trained people, you see somebody has been so much corrupted that is on the ground. And the referee comes and says, one, two, the hand, the man is not responsive. Three, and the other one is going to say, oh, I have won, I have won. Six, seven, nine, when he tried to say ten, and the man says, no, I'm not yet done. It is not yet over until God says it is over. Some of you have been so much corrupted by the devil until you are almost giving up. The Lord is giving you victory at the eleventh hour. Your victory is coming at the eleventh hour. Indeed, you have been battered. I agree. Indeed, you have been pushed to the wall. But it is not yet over. It is not yet over, church. I don't know what you are going through. God says it is not yet over. That issue you are battling with, it is not yet over. Continue fighting. Continue standing still fast. Continue praying and fasting. Victory is coming. Victory is assured. Victory is coming. Moment of joy is coming. Weeping. Then what? For a night. 
nations. Yes. Not one nation. Yes. Isaiah 45. Hallelujah. Many. I will subdue nations. Yes. Because the nations that are fighting, your enemies are many. Yes. People are fighting at your job. Hallelujah. People are fighting you Hi. in your neighborhood. Hallelujah. Because you're born again, they don't want you to hear the noise you make crying to God and pray. Man. People don't want to see the way you walk with the confidence. Man. People don't want to see how you drive, how you are blessed, how you dress. Amen. Coming to church and you look sharp. Where is he going? Where is he going? Why? Let me tell you, there are enemies who even you don't know. They are sending spells, witchcraft, yes. voodoo, yes. juju, yes. against you. Yes. But let me tell you, Amen. God says, I'm going to subdue. Yes. You know when they are subdued, they become powerless. Yes. Church, yes. I send them down to the devil worship. They are trying to kill me. They cannot. They are blind. Yes. They are sent. Even in this church, they come. I have been steadfast in the Lord. Amen. I know my power, where my power comes from. Yes. I know power is in the Lord. I nullify and destroy every power of darkness, every scheme and strategy, every weapon that is functioned against me shall not prosper. I destroy, I send fire to the kingdom of the enemy. They can't stand. For I know whom I am believed. And I'm convinced. I know whom I've entrusted my faith unto. And I'm convinced that he will bring it to accomplishment. What God has promised you, he will bring it to accomplishment. No demon, no person can steal what God has for you. If God says you're going to be great, you're going to be great. I'm just a small man coming from a rural village. Very rural village. Rural village. Rural village where there is nothing good. It's desperation. But God said, I'm going to make you great in the nation of America. Nation of the giants. Oh my God. And I believe God. And let me tell you the power. Prophesy is speaking positive. And I said, one day I will stand in the midst of generals, in people greater, and I will speak the word of God. And I will preach without favor. I will preach without fear. I will preach with the revelation. I will preach with the anointing. I will jump and I will decree and I will face the devil and on. So the devil hates you when you fight him head on. When you discover who he is, that's why he keeps on piling up stuff on him. Today you deal with this, tomorrow you find another one. You finish the thinking now you're breaking, tomorrow another issue comes. It is the children, it is the prison the work, it is the finances, it is your party, it is this, it is that the God says, wait a minute, I am up to something. I'm coming to subdue. I'm coming to destroy. I'm coming to arrest your enemies. I am coming to destroy them. And let me tell you, when God destroys the enemy, for once and for all. Amen. When he defeated the enemies of Israel, Israel never went back again to Egypt. Yes. When they crossed over in the Red Sea, in the Jordan, and the war of Jericho, have you heard Israel going back again into the bondage? Into the other bondage? For once and for all, they occupied the land flowing in the milk and honey. You are going to occupy the blessings of God. Milk and honey, not milk and honey per se. The good stuff. Come on, somebody. Who doesn't like good stuff? We are not serving God in vain. Do you think you are just serving God for nothing? I'm telling you, the Bible says it is not in vain to serve God. They are what we call benefits. That are good that come with a package. Amen. When you get that wonderful job, there is a package. They are called fridge benefits. Amen. Fridge benefits. It is for 1K. It has medical. It has whatever. I don't know. Everyone, every job is different. It comes with an assortment. It's an assortment package. Amen. Not with one blessing. Oh my God, when God starts to bless you, for the singles, He will give you a husband and the children <laughs> and the houses. <laughs> on the jobs. Amen. When God starts to bless, yes. when God starts to bless you, yes. it does not bring one blessing. Oh, yeah. Assortment. Tell your neighbor, assortment. assortment. It is a package of many stuff, yes. not only one. Yes. Give him praise. Amen. Now, the Lord is saying, gates shall not be shut again. Amen. Woo. I shall open the living 
gates. They are gates that are holding you to gain access. They are gates that are holding you to gain access. God is saying, I am going to break this gate of the bronze. Do you know of you, bronze is very powerful. Bronze is not easily broken. Iron is not easily broken. So there are gates that are holding your blessing. And I want us to go to the book of Matthew 12 and 29. The Gospel of Matthew 12 and verse 29. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Matthew 12. Hallelujah. And it says this. 12 and 29 says this, people of God. Oh, how can one enter a strong man's house and the brother is good? Unless he first binds the strong man, then he will plunder his home. Now, the enemy is holding our blessings. Oh, yeah. And the enemy will not release it until we go to where he is. Oh, yes. What you cannot confront, you cannot conquer. Therefore, the Bible is saying you cannot enter a house of a strong man. The strong man is the enemy who is holding your possession. Now, you have to go in the house of the strong man and bind him. That you may be able to take the brother and the spoil or the wealth that the enemy has been holding for you. Your wealth is somewhere, but somebody is holding it. And you they cannot come to where you are. You keep on saying, I'm blessed, I'm blessed. The curse is broken. Yes, indeed, the curse is broken. But you have to arise and wake up and go where your wealth is and bind that spirit that is holding your blessing and you hold him captive then take the brother all that he has and even what is not yours take everything yes. when the Israelites used to go in the battle and win they will never walk out without taking the wealth of that person they conquered or that nation they take the spirit called spoil bladder, bladder it depends on your accent. Plaid. Amen? Amen. Plaid. Spoil. Praise God. Amen. I'm from the old school. Amen? Amen? I'm from the old school. So, let's get, let's, let's catch up together. Now, when you go to your enemy's camp and you defeat them, don't say, now it is okay, no, I'm fine. Take everything. Amen. They used to yes. take all the gold, yes. all the ornaments, yes. all the silver objects, yes. clothing. Everything, Anything. and you leave that person with nothing because the Bible says, When the enemy is caught, let him repay seven times. Number seven represents God's completeness, number seven is completeness of God. So, when you find the one who has been holding your blessing, oh baby, don't leave him Hallelujah. until he pays everything and even with the interest. Yes. Yes. What they have been holding for you, they pay with the interest. Amen. Amen. <coughs> Isaiah 60 and verse 11. Isaiah 60 and verse 11. If you get it, say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. He says this. Therefore, your gates shall be open continually. They shall not be shut day or night. That men may bring to you the wealth of the Gentiles and their kings in possession. God is saying when the enemy has been caught and when he has broken the gates the gates shall remain open continually, not one time. Amen. You know, there are people like during the time of Thanksgiving, it comes only once in a year. The things are sold at half price. People go there as a hurry, as, as, as whatever. Once in a year. Now God is saying you're going to be enjoying that for continually. You don't have to strain, you don't have to wait until one time in a, in a year. Amen. <laughs> just to get only a 50 discount once in a year oh God is saying the gate shall 
be opened continually for people to bring wealth. What is wealth? The riches and honor, prosperity. You don't believe in prosperity? Do you know what has been holding the church? The church believes prosperity is for the people of the world. We are supposed to be rich. Tell your neighbor, I'm supposed to be rich. And I'm going to be rich. I have discovered who I am and what God wishes me. And what God wishes me. He wishes me to be wealthy as I serve him. Yeah, there's a condition. We must serve him. So the word of God will not come when you are is when you are serving God. I don't mean you'll be standing in the pulpit and preaching. Presenting yourself as a living sacrifice. Worshipping him. Praising his name, Amen. studying his word, Amen. testifying to people about the goodness of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. You miss a Jesus loves you. Hallelujah. Amen. By the way, are you born again? <laughs> Would you like to get born again? This God is so good. Would you like to have a connection with him? Yes. God will bless you. Amen. Well, well, what prayer need do you have? Can we pray together? Hallelujah. You know, with us, can we pray together with an attitude? Oh. <laughs> That's something God. You don't have to be in the pulpit here every Sunday like pastor. God has given you a pulpit in the place of work. Amen. There are people sir, where you go, people interact with in business. Amen. That is a pulpit. Amen. Tell them, by the way, even after we finish this deal, do you know after we finish this, I have something to ask you. Do you do you have a relationship with the Lord? Amen. What what do you mean? What do you mean by that now they're open? What do you mean by that? Are you born again? What is to be born again? Take them to the book of John 3. I'm born in a man who was a great teacher who didn't know what salvation is. You expound. Don't, 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 rest them. don't argue with them. Tell them it is just by the Holy Spirit. You just believe. And you're born again. Believe the Holy Spirit to teach you. I can't teach you everything. Even though you want to, you cannot quote the whole Bible to people. There are people you cannot quote the whole Bible and still they don't, they don't get it. Amen. Leave the Holy Spirit to convict. If they don't deceive him, tell them, I'm going to be praying for you, amen? And who knows, tell them within time they will come to the kingdom of God. Amen. Now, gate shall be not shut again. Amen. During the Babylonian rule, the Babylonian rule, you remember the old time, there were, there were gates built of bronze and iron. There are 25 gates in every corner of the city. 25 gates. That's why God is saying, I'm going to break the gates because there were many. It's not one gate. There are many gates that are hindering you to receive your possession. You see, first we broke the curse of the, of the lineage, generation, and the finances. Now, and I see sometimes we have an imprisoned mind curse. That we cast ourselves and we don't know we are put a brocade, we are put a gate. God is saying all those gates, it doesn't matter how many they are. During the Babylonian rule, there were 25 gates every corner of the city. Therefore, it was so fortified that you could not enter. And what they used to do, they would go after they defeated nations, they would take the plunder, they bring those riches, they bring those ornaments, they bring those vessels, they bring those things, and then they store them in secret places and they shut the gate. So that the enemy cannot come for their for their blessings or for their possession. Now God is saying, Silas, I will hold you. He said, You now church, your name, put your name there. Now you J, now you Gail, now you uh, sister uh, uh, sister uh, Jacqueline. Praise be to God, no sister hand. I will hold your right hand and break those gates and take you to the place where that world is hidden and is stored. It is intact and it is there, but there is a hindrance that I need to break. But you can't make it on your own. That's why you can't make it without God. God is saying, I will hold your hand because the enemy is so powerful. The enemy is so loaded and so armed to teeth. So God saying, by your own you will not be able to defeat. We cannot defeat the devil on our own. We must believe in his power. Now when God goes ahead of us, what does he He goes clearing all the hindrances, all the barriers, all the brokens, and all the powers. Let me tell you, people of God, when you go in the battle, when two militaries are fighting or two nations are fighting, the every camp puts what we call improvised uh, um, uh, improvised uh, uh, explosive devices, IED, landmines. Uh, you understand about the landmines so that the oncoming enemies will be blown off 
off before they advance to reach you. What they do, they put protection, they put landmines, IEDs, improvised explosive devices. Those are the modern ones of late. Amen. So these are to brew you up. You don't see it, it's just on the ground, and as you're coming on the side, boom, you are blown off. So the enemy has put explosive. But thanks be to God. Now in the military, there are people who go ahead with a sense, a sense when the landmines are they clear so that the military can come and proceed. Now God is saying, I will come clearly all those uh, devices, all those hindrances, uh, all those explosives so that you can go and occupy and receive what you're supposed to possess. Hallelujah! It doesn't matter what the enemy has done. He has done a lot of damage. But when the time of restoration comes, we are in the dispensation of restoration. God spoke to me 2017. For those who had the prophetic word, and you can go on YouTube and download Christ Worship Center International, you'll see me giving a prophetic word for 2017. God said He's going to bless the church. And that's why I'm grounding you in the teachings of prosperity. He said, How are you going to be blessed? How are you going to receive the blessings if you don't know the way? I am teaching you how to go and possess your possession. Because it won't come when you are seated, when you are enjoying. When you are hitting, when you are very making, when you are praising, no, it will come when you know the secret, when you know the strategy of the enemy, and you know how to counterattack him, and you know what you need to put in place. Therefore, God is clearing the way for the church. Now, let me tell you, we have begun the journey. Oh my God, we are on the, almost the last lap. How many of you seen when the people are racing and running? Oh, the last lap is the worst. It is the tough. They remove all the kinetic energy, the hidden energy, kinetic energy. You know, you run until you're exhausted. And let me thank you. People from my country are so gifted. So get to know you can't beat me. Amen. When it comes to racing, you can't beat me. I'm good on that. I'm so many gold medals, so don't worry about that. I just chose to be a minister. Amen. So you see, it's like they have a small heating and a refrigerator inside. They don't get that. But the last lap, and they don't look back. They look forward. They are looking at that gold. They are looking at those million dollars. Amen? Yes. It is not in vain. Yes. This race we are running, it is a wealthy race. Amen. God has blessing for us. Amen. It is not in vain. Amen. We have been called such a time as this when the wealth is being released. The Bible says it is the dispensation of the wealth of the wicked to be released to the righteous. Amen. But we have to be positioned. Amen. We have to be in tune. Amen. If we won't be in tune, we won't know. Things are being released in the air. Amen. Opportunities are coming. And people are not attentive. We will miss. We need to be attentive. And when we have the anointing of God, because the anointing of God is what breaks the yoke, we'll be able to tap. Imagine this like this. Bah! You tap and make the first one. Yes. Most of you are working. We will need to start thinking about business, side jobs, yes. small jobs, even online. You can do business online. It doesn't cost you don't have to open a shop. You don't have to hire. You don't have to open an office or do have somebody. You have the self CEO in the computer. You start your business there. Selling some stuff. Post them there. Post them there. Crinkles is there. Post it there. So many, so many companies, so many apps have come for selling. Ah, you put it there. You don't even think it tells me you want come for it. I'm not shipping. You come for it. You want it. Let me tell you, there are some trash that are treasures, and people don't know that. Someone else trash is someone else treasure. Ask me. Ask me. I know. I don't want to go in details. There is something somebody doesn't need. You buy it. You prepare it. You post it there. Somebody says, "This is what I've been looking for." Please, how much, how much, how much, how much? Twenty dollars. Please don't say to somebody else. Can you hold it for me? Can you remove it from the, 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 from the post? Yes. You make money. That's how God is going to bless us. You open business. You are not limited. Who told you only position at one place? Who told you only supposed to be employed? You can be a CEO of yourself. I can be a CEO. You can be a CEO. Yes. You can be Bill Gates. Yes, you can be Zuckerberg. Who started the Facebook? Zuckerberg. Zuckerberg. I don't know how do you call him. Zuckerberg. A young Zuckerberg. 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 Praise be to God. I told you from the old school, Zuckerberg. Amen. 
That guy just started Facebook. What is that? Online. Does he have any producer? Nothing. What is he sending you? Information. Information. He's a billionaire. Or do you think that when God shut that nothing else can be done? Do something. Google. Instagram. What about something? WhatsApp. Bling. Bling. And you have potential. You are sitting here. You have the anointing right now. You have the anointing of God. You can do it. Amen. Ah, you can do it. Amen. The Bible says we can do all things yes. through Christ Jesus who strengthened us. Amen. 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 I am not telling the church to go and steal. I'm telling you to go and invent. Look at T.D. Jakes. T.D. Jakes is a, is a businessman. He's a preacher and a businessman. There is no room for you to do business. He is a minister and he's a businessman. He writes books. He produces songs and CDs. He sings. <laughs> Hallelujah. And that money comes to his own account. He acts. He's, a, he's a, like a comedian. Praise be to God. Movies. He acts. Hallelujah. You think all those two gents he are from the church? No. From his personal business. Hey, your pastor is going up jet. Where is he getting the money from? Where does that money come from? From business. Praise be to God. My business. Fifty million. Can you imagine US dollar? Fifty million. It's not the church is blessed also bad. To business. There's no harm. God is removing the hindrances that your eyes will be open to see where the wealth is. Yes. And he will hold you to lead you where the wealth is. Yes. But you have to ask God, where is the direction? Yes. Some of us, we have been wondering that the Israelites in the wilderness, no sense of direction, going around. 40 years. 40 years, going around. Round and round. When you have a sense of direction, you walk majestically. Amen. And you go to the right place. You don't even use the GPS. Sometimes the GPS will move. Will tell you I'm recalculating. I lost the direction. <laughs> this address is nowhere in the system. Who are recalculating? And you keep on going around. Hey, the, 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 the Holy Spirit election. He leads to the right place. And you see, yeah, you knock the door. Amen. And the door is opened. Amen. The list is history. Amen. 2017 Church of Jesus. There is a mighty blessing that has been released. Not that he is going. You know, we have been talking God will. God has released. Amen. I'm talking present tense. God has enabled the church to make where it could not make it. Amen. As we start this year, we are only in the second month. Let's start to have ideas. Let's start to connect with the people because there are people being sent to God in your life. Amen. Don't chase anybody. Design and know the season and discern and know who that person is. There is somebody coming in your life, you are meeting even in the metro, you don't know in the bus stop whether you are not driving, and the, the person is sent to come and take you to the to your destiny. Yes. So be sensitive in the realm of the spirit. Get to know what God is doing. Because we will not just jump from heaven and drop here in the church that is not distributing it to you. God will use people. That's why here He will bring, He will cause people to bring that to your bosom. He will send men and women, even your enemies. I said, even your enemies will be sent by God to be a blessing in your life. Don't chase them away. They are enemies that God has been working on them to work so hard and do quadros and bring that wealth to you. Amen. I say, I don't know what is happening. I feel I've been convicted, I've been touched. To bring this to you. Mm -hmm. I have been touched to give this to you. I have been touched to transfer this property to you. Mm -hmm. I have been touched to give you this car. Mm -hmm. I have been touched to give you this, uh, the, the, the savings. Mm -hmm. These boats. Mm -hmm. God is releasing the wealth. And I am talking this as a man of God in the spirit. I am still spiritual. Mm -hmm. Money is going to change your hearts. Mm -hmm. Who doesn't like money? I, want, I do. If you don't like that money, bring it to me. <laughs> I will sanctify it. Amen. You know there are people who fear this money because it was held by who and who. You just need to sanctify it. Amen. It comes, Amen. I sanctify it, I pray for it, I dedicate it, and I give the tithe. Yes. Once you give the tithe, you have clarified everything. Amen. When you tithe it, it becomes God's 
money. So no cars. Can be whether it was a witch holding it. Let me tell you whether a witch brings money. I will sanctify it. I will sanctify that money. Oh, you, I'm not serious. I will sanctify it. Oh, yeah. And tithe. And go do what I need to do with it. Money has no problem with the spirit. Yeah. When you need to remove it, the spirit is it. Money is not manufactured by the witches. It's manufactured by it is called federal what? Yeah. Federal yeah. results. Yes. Ah. Was the witch near the federal results manufacturing that money? No. I thought even about the one dollar. Somebody about the one dollar which has the pyramid under the high. When the money was dedicated to Lucifer. 1785. In God, it trust now they dedicated to Lucifer. You go and see dollar one, you read what dollar number one says there. That this money, that's why it does not stick on your hand. Why? It's already dedicated. They broke the covenant. In God, we trust. And then they brought and put that pyramid to dedicate it to Freemason, the Lord. They talked about Freemason a couple of Sundays here. I, I, I can go deeper. I don't want to talk about the money right now. That's another topic. Now you have to see me personally. That one I won't teach on the on the hair. I will let you know how you will make wealth here and how money will stick in your pocket if you want to go. Amen. Because the money has been given a spirit not to sit here. Mm -hmm. Every time that you have money, everything where you find, you find this dress, you find this book, what you don't need, you find a phone, you have two, three other phones. Because the money is that it's not supposed to settle. Mm -hmm. I will teach you how. You can keep the money and the money serve you and it does not give you stress. Amen. It says, you say, sit down, I'm preaching. Amen. Sit down, I'm going to church. Amen. Stay in the bank until I plan what I'm going to do with you. Amen. Stay in the bank, I'm investing you to do something viable. Yes. That's still gospel. Yes. Amen? Amen. We are dealing with a very powerful enemy who is against our success. And the breakthroughs, but nevertheless, our God is up to give us the anointing that will break all the yokes and barriers. Amen. So the enemy that we're fighting with is not a, it's not a weak enemy. He is so strong, but God has the energy, he has the ability, he has the power. Amen. Isaiah ten twenty seven says, and the yoke shall be broken because of the anointing. This yoke on your neck, Isaiah 10 to 7, I won't go there. This yoke will be broken because of the anointing. There is a yoke on your necks, on our necks, that the enemy has bound us. That when somebody's yoke cannot go left, right. But the Bible says because of the anointing, because they to my anointed Silas. Because the anointing is what the power that is breaking that yoke. A yoke is a is is a kind of a of a of a, of a barrier or a or a pole or a, a kind of a yoke. It's, it's a, not a stick. A wrong road that ties you on your neck. Two animals are tied together to pull cargo, to prove the land. And as long as they are Yoked and bound on that, they cannot get out. There are some of us who have been bound and we can't go anywhere else. We only follow the direction that we are led. We have a bridle on our mouth and people on behind and beating us and beating us and afflicting us to take us to the wrong direction. God is saying the yoke will be broken because of the anointing, because of the fatness of the anointing. The purpose of God going ahead of us is to strengthen the parts and clear all the hindrances to remove barriers. Barriers will be removed that will walk on a clean path. Amen? Amen. Now, God says he shall go ahead of us to make crooked places straight, removing weapons of mass destruction. I talked about the high it is. Weapons of mass destruction. They are weapons that are set to destroy you that you don't make it. You find many people don't finish the race. Why? Because there was a trap. There are so many traps. There are so many people don't reach their destiny. Many start, start feeling sick. When you start feeling sick, you stop the progress you are getting. When you start to get weak, you cannot be focused anymore. When you start, when people die. When you die. Let me tell you, dying is not the will of God. The Bible says that we shall, they shall not die, but I shall live to test the goodness of the Lord. We need to refuse the spirit of untimely death. Yes. The undead are not God. Oh, it is the will of God. He died because of the will of God. It's the will of God for somebody to die young, and you have so much potential. You have a vision. 
God does not want us to die. And I repeat again, I said, man, as Monroe said before he died, if you want to know great wealth, where it is buried, there are people who want to become great and because they did not, they did not execute, they did not implement, they did not implement what they were supposed to. They died with their blessing. They died with their knowledge. They died with the wealth in the grave. It is not the will of God for you to die. Some dead you have to refuse. I told you I refuse to die. I refuse to die. I was given two weeks by doctors. 2008. I was told I'm dying. Our guns are shut down. The heart was pumping like this. And these are inter 12 inters. 12 inters. Not one doctor. I was surrounded. But next me to God, one of the lady doctor was a born again Christian. He said, I know you're a minister. But me, I'm giving you the medical terminology. I know God can do miracles, but I don't give medical terminology in front of my colleagues. You have two weeks to live. I know you're a pastor. And the Bible is on my chest. Do you know what I looked at them? I left them and said, thank you, doctor, for your efforts. You have treated me. You have done all what you can. You have done all the. You have carried all the cuts, cans, and all the, all the marahai and all the protest and the everything. And the, you have come to a conclusion. Mm -hmm. I quitted the psalm on 1817. I shall not die, mm -hmm. but I shall live Amen. to testify Amen. what the Lord has done. Yes. Amen. David told me, you, "We are released you to go die." They called the people to come and pick me up. My wife was not there. I was told, I left my car, somebody has to drive my car. You are not supposed to drive. Yes, you are not supposed to drive. You are going to die. I said, I want that 2008. Do I look now like somebody who is going to die tomorrow? No. Do I look like I'm going to die? No. I said, I will die. It is in my book. There are untimely deaths that come. You are not supposed to die. And you see, it is the will of God. Next thing, the doctor said, I am going to die. You start bedding a little. Next thing, you sit down. The doctor said, I am going to die. Next thing, you sleep in bed. The doctor said, I am going to die. The next thing, you rest in peace. How can you rest in peace when you are dead? <laughs> Doctors are good. Doctors are good. I'm not a chemist. Doctors are good. They do their work. God has given the knowledge. But God heals. Doctor Street. God heals. Come on, somebody. Better have a life than treat. But healing comes from God. So, there are some of you who have so much potential. If I had died, is, will this church be there? No. no, let me ask you. Will you ask your neighbor, will you be there? No. I refuse to die. I'm going to write another book. I refuse to die. Yeah. Amen. 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 Now, God says, I shall go and make the crooked way straight. Let me say this. Simply because we undergo crooked issues in life, because we have enemies on every side who wish us to fail and to be defeated in life, ends and gain and releasing spells which corrupt and the voodoo. Let them continue to use their witchcraft. Mm -hmm. We also have Godcraft. Yeah. Do you want me to show you where Godcraft is? In the Bible? Mm -hmm. Do you, does someone of you know where Godcraft is? Do you have any idea? Godcraft. Okay. Let's go to the book of uh, Exodus 4 1 9. Exodus. Exodus 4 1 9. And I'll start to, I'll do it. Exodus 4 1 9. 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 Exodus 4 1 Exodus 4, verse 1 and 9. Let me read quickly. Exodus 4, 1 9. And Moses answered and said, But suppose they will not believe me. Listen to my voice. Suppose they say, The Lord has not appeared to you. So the Lord said to him, What is in your hand? Ask your neighbor. What is in your hand? What is in your hand? And Moses said, A rod. And he said, Cast it on the ground. So he cast it on the ground. And it became a serpent. And Moses fell from it. <laughs> Moses, what he was holding, God made his craft. <laughs> the snake became a snake. A snake. The people of God. <laughs> this is serious business. Look. <laughs> Look what happened. The Lord said to Moses, reach out your hand and take it by tail. 
and he reached out his hand and caught it, and it became a rod in his hand. What is that? Is it that God's magic? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Then they may believe that the Lord of the fathers, of God of Abraham and God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, and appear to you. Furthermore, the Lord said to him, Now put your hand on your bosom. And he put his hand on his bosom. And when he took it out, the old desire was leprous like snow. <laughs> what is that again? Witchcraft, Godcraft. <laughs> and he said, put your hand on your bosom again. He put his hand on his bosom again, and he drew it out of his bosom, and behold, it was restored like the other flesh. Then it will be, they do not believe you, nor heed the message of the first sign that they may believe the message of the later sign. Then it shall be, if they do not believe even these two signs, or listen to your voice, that you shall take water from the river and pour it on the ground, the water will take from the river, become blood on the dry land. Oh. What is that? God craft. That they bring voodoo, <laughs> We have God craft. Amen. They bring their witch and they come on, baby, come. Come, baby, come. Come, baby, come. come, baby, come. <laughs> You're bringing witch craft? Yes, I have God craft. Amen. Remember again, as a fellow, yes. the, the strong men, the wise men brought some snakes. Yes. And Moses' snake became bigger. Yes. And they swallowed their snakes. Yes. Your power will swallow your enemies. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And after the gates are broken into pieces and parts made clear, here is what will happen. I will give you treasures of darkness. Now, what is a treasure? Treasure is quality of precious variables, objects, monies, gold, silver, and riches. It was the custom of the nations when they conquer the counterparts in battle, they would take the spoil and brother, namely gold, jewels, silver vessels, and precious items, and they would hide them in secret places. Now, while the devil has been stealing, stalling in secret bunkers, listen to this now. It is time for us to pray because the enemy has already been conquered. Amen. Amen. God has conquered our common enemy of a financial breakthrough. Amen. Amen. Treasures hidden in secret place belongs to you. Amen. Wealth and riches belongs to you. Holiness and purity belongs to you. Amen. That you don't have always to be crying. And I said last Sunday, you wait from paycheck to paycheck. It's okay right now. But I'm teaching you that you're going to advance to graduate from living from paycheck to paycheck. God told me teach the church on how to be blessed. Don't tell them God will bless, God will bless. I jump a script. I give you the scriptures. How are you going to make it? You have to start to implement something. Begin something. Never despise the days of small beginnings. Amen. This ministry, I started with my wife and two children. This ministry. In this, we started on it. My wife will be the leader, I'll be the preacher, I'll be the key, I'll be everything. My daughter will be the keyboard, and the other one who is not here will be the leading praise and worship. One is in the keyboard, and my wife is leading the service and the prayer. And the pastor will come connect the equipment, I'm the technician, and I'll carry all things in the car, and I'll preach, and I'll lay hands to my family. I will pray for my family like I'm laying hands. I say, come here, all of them down, power of them down, fire! And we were on TV, can you imagine? Amen. We were on TV three, three months. Television. This ministry you see here, and we are going back. Amen. That's where we are going. Amen. Never despise the just small beginning. People come and say, Oh, that family church. Yes, it's a family church, but God is in it. Amen. Yes. Do you know people fail to do things because somebody else is not with you? People will come when they hear your success. Oh, come on, brother. Oh, your God is doing great things in your life. Come on, tell me the secret. Tell you the secret. Why did you come and join me when I was beginning? It is good. There are those who come and when things are finished. But I want you to know one thing. When you begin something, be steadfast. Be committed to it. Be persistent. Be there. Stand still. 
The Bible says, a righteous man falleth seven times, but he rises up. You fail, you return back again. Failure is the womb of success. Amen. You fail, you go back and check where you failed. You redraft again, you restructure again, you come back again. You fail, you go back again until you become strong. You build what you call strong shock absorbers. You begin a small thing like this, like the fire is lit, one match is stick. You lit and it burns the whole bush, right? Amen. Hallelujah. Proverbs 13.22 The wealth of the wicked is told for the righteous. That's the word of God. I don't want to go there right now. In Deuteronomy 28.11 Let's read that one and then that's our last scripture. Deuteronomy 28 verse 11 and 12. Deuteronomy I'm starting to change my hugs on a little bit. Deuteronomy Deuteronomy my accent is Deuteronomy, amen? amen. Deuteronomy. 28 verse 11 and 12. It says, And the Lord will grant you plenty of goods. What is that? The Lord will grant you what? Plenty of goods in his fruit, your body, in the increase of your livestock, and in the produce of your ground. In the land of which the Lord sought your forefathers to give you. Verse 12. The Lord will open to you his good treasure. Oh. Amen. The events to give the rain to your land in its season. That means you will receive your blessing in season. There will be no delay. Amen. There will be no drought. There will be no famine. Amen. Mm -hmm. And bless all the work of your hand. All the work of your hand. All what you do. God is going to do what? He's going to bless it. You shall lend to nations, but you shall not borrow. Amen. You become a lender. Amen. How many of you know a bank? When you need money, you go to the bank. Guess what? You become a bank yourself. Amen. That people will come to borrow from you. Not to borrow, to borrow and pay back. Amen. And I believe you'll become a lender. Amen. I'll become, I'll become, you'll become. Amen. If this anointing God has put on me, it will flow over you. Amen. Finances, Amen. financial, Amen. breakthrough. Amen. I'm talking Amen. of your life. Amen. Not people telling you about money, you will hold it with your hands. Amen. And sometimes you count and they count and you return like I think this one is not mine. You count, 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 who is looking at you? No. Uh, you put it down again, you think there's somebody watching and nobody's watching. That's where you are going. You will count it. You go to a place and say, Cash! I don't use credit. I don't use anything. Cash. How much is this, sir? Cash? I gave a testimony. I went to buy something and I'm not going into details. What do you do, sir? 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 You don't have to know what they do. It is money you need. We can be blessed. Let me tell you in our simplicity. We look simple. Sometimes we underestimate it because the way we look, because of our faith. Being, being born again is not a weakness. Mm -hmm. Being a child of God, not somebody to intimidate you because you are supposed to be humble, somebody praise you. say, no, 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 sir, don't do that. You don't know whom you are joking with. You don't know whom you are praying games with. I'm a rich man. Oh, when you say you are rich, oh, okay, sir, okay, what do you do? <laughs> Some of you fear to say by faith you are rich because of the intimidation. What the man speaking, so shall he become. Yes. What do you speak? I am. Yes. God says, I am. Yes. I am that I am. Amen. I am what you need. Yes. But there is a principle. Once we fulfill the principle of God, and we invest by faith, we invest and we implement by faith. Breakthrough. Whatever you're planning to do, do it now. Don't say tomorrow. I will do next year. I will do next year. Beginning of camp, many people here have so many proposals. And I say the proposals are just things in the mind. What you need to do is to do things by faith. Amen. It's not proposal. It's to implement. Amen. Proposals mean proposals until they're implemented. Amen. And many people have so many proposals. So many resolutions. God wants us to be serious. Because of time, I'm going to release. I'm going to finish quickly. Every demon conquered in your life 
must release your wealth in Jesus' name. Every demon you conquer is holding your wealth. It is in the spiritual command that demon to bring back what he stole from you. There was a blessing was supposed to come. The puzzle was withheld right in the middle of the transit and it returned back. It came to us, you are not there. They returned it back and they didn't send you a slip to go collect it back. When that demon that in that blessing to come is defeated, let him return back. Let them reshape. Let them reshape your blessing. Let your blessing start to be shaped back. Let your possession start to be reshaped. Let the favor that you are supposed to receive some place be released. There is a favor that you are supposed to receive somewhere. It may not be physical finances, but there is a favor which you are supposed to receive. Let now those things start to come back again because God is holding your hands and has broken the gates, the entrances that have been standing your way. Amen. Amen. This year, 2017, God has promised us great favor. Now that all doors are open, then we need to do something. We need to implement. Viable projects, income, generating. We need to do something, not talking alone. Faith without works is dead. Show me your faith and I show you my works. God is pleased when we have faith. Faith is substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. We need to develop an attitude of faith. Things we don't see in the natural, we see them in the supernatural. You see yourself, that business, you see the office, you see your ministry, you see yourself flying and traveling, you see yourself receiving your clients, you see yourself in your, in your system living, you see yourself without a agency, you see yourself without shop. You see yourself with that uh, online business, you see it, you print it in your mind, and you bring it into to be to come. Then God shall call us by our individual names. Personally, our God does not need a proxy. How many of you know proxy? Somebody to represent you. Proxy, somebody represents you on behalf. God does not need somebody to represent you. He told Silas, I know you by your name. That you know I call you by your name. Your personal name. Not somebody else's name. Hallelujah. Not care of. See, stroke, oh, care of. You know, those who didn't you have a hundreds, you will write your name there, but care of so and so. That God will not go through that person, will come directly. Amen. You, Amen. Your package, somebody, because somebody goes to open your letter, because this name also is there, care of so and so. So, both of you, you have an attachment. God is saying, I know you individually. Amen. Amen. Treasures of darkness are now released in the physical realm. Let the church arise and possess it. Amen. Whether wherever our feet, Joshua 1 3, wherever our feet shall step, Amen. we shall possess. So, where are you stepping now? You're stepping on something. Can you possess it? Can you make it yours? Can you hold it? Stand up on your feet in Jesus' name. Father, I thank you for the church. They are going to do something tonight. But even to this word that has come, because your word does not go back void without accomplishing the purpose that it was meant for. I thank you, Lord. I have released the prophetic message you give to me. That now is our dispensation to go and possess the land. Even the children of Israel, children of Joseph, when they were given the virgin land, they were told to go and declare the bush to the farthest limit. We are going to clear the bush. There is bush. We have to do something. Tonight we are going to clear the bush so that we can put that seed on a fertile, fertile, fertile ground. Thank you, Jesus. Far to wait and far to ground. Jesus, I thank you tonight because this word will not return back to you. Somebody has grabbed this message. Somebody is going along with this vision. Somebody is going to do something because the anointing is released. I declare and I declare we are blessed in Jesus' name. I thank you and I honor you. Whoever came here with an expectation, came with a body problem, the healing of God is upon you. Came with a physical need, the power of God is touching you. Any need, any specific area 
of your life. The things are not balanced. I command everything to balance right now. I command the power of God to touch you right now. I command the anointing of God to break yokes that came yeah. holding you. You are being held captive. You are free, free, free in Jesus' name. You are not leaving this place without baggage. You are living lighter and going with the presence of God and going to make it and going to do something and going to start that which you feel the Holy Spirit leading you to do. In Jesus' name, I bless you and I lead you to go and prosper. Amen. Yeah. chosen generation we've been called for to show these excellence hey, all I require for life God has given me and I know who I am we are, we are a chosen generation 